everyone, welcome back to Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. Today's video is all about the Women's Prize for Fiction. I've read some more books to review and I'm going to be predicting the shortlist. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name's Alice and I have a way too many books. And today I'm going to be talking about a lot more books that I read that were not on my giant TBR, but they were on the Women's Prize for Fiction long list. And in case you've missed it, I have been hosting the Women's Prize plod along, along with my two friends, Gemma from Gemma Books and Charlie from Charlie Brook Reads. And we've been hosting this to uh, sort of read with everybody else who wants to uh, the Women's Prize for Fiction long list. And it was always my plan to try and read as many of the long list as possible before the shortlist was announced, but with the overall goal of probably reading all of them by the time the winner is announced in June. So on Wednesday, we will see what the shortlist is. It's being announced at 7.30 on Wednesday morning. I realise that I am rapidly running out of time to read any more books. But because I'm a super competitive person with myself, I have um, ended up suddenly having one more spurt of reading Women's Prize books uh, this weekend. I've now managed to read 10 of the 16 long-listed books, which I'm really pleased with. I am two-thirds of the way through uh, book number 11, and I have also started book number 12 on audiobook. So I think that by the time the shortlist comes out, I will comfortably have read 12 of the books, maybe 13 if I keep on abandoning my TBR and keep reading exclusively the long list. So we will see. My aim was always to read all of these from the library if possible and with the exception of one book which I bought with a credit on Audible I have actually managed to do that so far. Mostly physical books out of the library but a few of them I've had on Borrow Box on audio and the one I'm listening to currently on audio I also have on Borrow Box. Today I have five more books and two thirds of a book to briefly review. I feel like these books, I don't have as many thoughts as the previous four that I reviewed. So last time I checked in with you, I actually read five of the books. Glory by No Violet Bulawayo was reviewed in my uh, booktube prize a judging video and I'll link that in the description down below. That's where you can find my review of Glory. And you can find my reviews of I'm a Fan by Sheena Patel, Fire Rush by Jacqueline Crooks, The Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell, and Demon Cop Head by Barbara Kingsolver in a previous video where I reviewed four of the Women's Prize books. I'll also link that. So today a few more reviews but they are quite brief. Then I will rank for you all of the books that I've read. I'm not going to include the one I'm listening to on audiobook because I'm only about 30 minutes in even though it's quite a short audiobook. I don't think that would be fair but I, I am going to rank the book that I'm two-thirds of the way through because uh, although it may move dependent on the ending, I, I'm fairly confident with roughly where it sits within my rankings so far. And after my own ranking, which will obviously include my own top six that I would pick for the shortlist, I will also predict what I think the judges are going to choose. Reviews first, and I'm going to whiz through these in the order that I read them this time. And we're starting with Pod by Laylene Paul. And this one is from the point of view of some dolphins mainly, although there are other sea creatures whose story is told to us in this book too. I buddy read this book with Gemma from Gemma Books and I, I just don't really know where to start or what to say about Pod. We mainly follow a dolphin called Ia who feels out of place in her pod because she has never felt able to hear what the other dolphins hear and they are spinner dolphins and she can't spin because of her um, inability to hear what they hear. There are also other characters in this, my favourite character and really for me the only redeeming feature of the book unfortunately was a brilliant dolphin called Google. Google has been trained by the military and has survived like a horrific, horrific 
trauma in doing something for the military. And I loved the character of Google and I happily would have followed him more. And I do think that this book could have been a lot better if it had focused more on Google and Ia and less on other things within the ocean, such as uh, there were many different fish and clams that we were introduced to as well. For me, this book had too much trauma crammed in. Like, I, I do appreciate trauma within books and I think it has its place, but I almost felt like rather than info dump, although there was, for me, a lot put into this of uh, the author's research, she's obviously found out a lot about the ocean and included it all. Now I'm, I really really respect an author where you can tell in the book that they've done lots of research that they know much more but they don't feel the need to tell you everything. That I think is a really <laughs> high standard of book for me. I thought there was probably too much information about the sea in this for me. I felt there was a really big push on an environmental message and I do understand that and I do think that this is why this book has appeared on the list. But the trauma levels in this book and the amount of um, rape and like sex in general in this book was far too much for me, particularly coming from the point of view of fish and dolphins. I, I don't feel the need to read about like loads and loads of sex and rape in books about humans, I definitely didn't need to know all of this stuff about sex in the ocean. So it wasn't for me and I understand that a lot of people have enjoyed it. I did end up giving this book two and a half stars but I think that that was mainly for the character of Google and I do feel like I would have enjoyed the book a lot more if the author had stayed focused on the dolphins and Google in particular rather than focusing on all the different fish. So that was Pod. And next up I finished Children of Paradise which I was actually reading alongside Pod and I feel like Children of Paradise by Camilla Gradeva which is the book on this list that is set in a cinema, um, an old-fashioned cinema. I, I really enjoyed the cinema as a setting, I thought that the, uh, the cinema was excellent. I feel like maybe I would have got slightly more from the book if I'd have understood all of the film references uh, because each chapter is titled for a different film and the chapters where I have seen the film I could see some parallels within the book alluding to that film. Yeah, I enjoyed the experience of reading this a lot more than I enjoyed the experience of reading Pod. This was a book I was really looking forward to because I feel like it had been billed as really really weird and it is weird but it for me it didn't live up to that weirdness enough in the like final third of the book. Certainly weird things happen in this cinema. There is a lot a lot of bodily fluids in this book. If I had to summarise it in a sentence it would be cinema full of bodily fluids because it's just constant. Um, and I'm not, I am not easily grossed out by books but for a book that wasn't I don't think deliberately a gross out book this had lots of gross moments and that was fine but I didn't think it particularly added that much. I feel there was some interesting commentary in this on change and capitalism in that the cinema is taken over by new owners and sort of uh, remarketed as like a, uh, a modern chain cinema and it was interesting to see that change. I just don't feel there was that strong a plot in Children of Paradise but I did enjoy following the main character Holly. There were some moments that I won't be able to unsee in this book unfortunately and uh, if you've read it you probably know what moments I'm talking about. I wouldn't say this book is for the faint-hearted but I also wouldn't say that it is scary or anything like that. So this was fine, it's kind of one of the mid-table books uh, in this long list for me. And next up I finished listening to Stone Blind by Natalie Haynes. This was also narrated by the author Natalie Haynes. She certainly injects humour into the reading of her own book and I don't know if I would have picked up all of that humour on the page. There were really things that I did love about Stoneblind and that elevated it 
uh, above some of the books on this this short list. Uh, it wasn't my favourite of the Greek retellings that I've read, which are not many to be honest, and I haven't read the story of Medusa in a good long while, so I feel like I had enough distance from it to not feel like I was being told something I already knew. I really, really think that the strength of this book is in Medusa's story. Everything that was Medusa's own story was absolutely brilliantly done. Natalie Haynes absolutely uh, like blew me away with the Medusa sections. There are also a lot of other sections to this book. Uh, there's quite a lot between the gods and most of the stuff between the gods is the gods arguing, which was fine. I didn't mind the bits with the gods. Some of them were quite funny. I, I understand that the gods were there because they had a big part to play in the story, but I think that bit could have maybe been pared back a little bit don't know. That said, I really did enjoy listening to the audiobook. I enjoyed some of the unusual perspectives that were given in this, like the perspective of the snakes on Medusa's head at one point. I, I, think it's a, I think it's a really, really interesting book and I enjoyed it a lot more than I expected to. I went into it with quite low expectations. So this is one of the books I have really, really enjoyed reading on the long list. So next up, I read Cursed Bread by Sophie McIntosh. This is a strange book for me. I think it's a strange book for everybody, but I really liked Sophie McIntosh's writing style. I thought it was excellent, but I don't think that there was actually that much plot to this story. So I feel like this book's being marketed as a book about cursed bread, about a mass poisoning in a town in France that, that actually happened. And that's what it's being marketed as, but what I think it actually is, is a story of obsession. So, like I'm a fan on this list, there is so much obsession in this book, and it's the obsession again of a woman for another woman. So, in this book, Elodie, who is the baker's wife and is quite bored of her life, I would say, becomes obsessed with a new couple in the village who are referred to as the ambassador, the man, and the woman is called Violet. And Elodie becomes absolutely obsessed with Violet in particular, but the husband of it as well. And it's, yeah, it's really a story of how obsessed with them she is. And what that leads her to do, and the poisoning is kind of a backdrop to this story. And it would be unfair to say that nothing happens in this book, because towards the end uh, we see a lot of the fallout of what is actually happening behind the scenes in this book. I could have done with more of this madness and excitement that we get near the end of the book, and probably less of the rest of it, but that was just my preference. I really did like the writing style and I liked the fact that it had this, like, I feel like Elodie was an unreliable narrator and that uh, she's looking back on this and we get some of her life now as well as her life then. I did always find it interesting as I was going along. I was wondering what's going to happen, what has happened. I don't think this book is quite <laughs> putting things off for me, but I did, I did largely enjoy reading it even though not that much happens. So again, for me, it's kind of within the mid table of these books. Next, I read and finished yesterday, The Bandit Queens by Perini Shroff. This one I really, really did enjoy. I found it a bit slower to get into than I thought I would. This is a book set in India about a woman who is believed to have killed her husband uh, five years ago. And the whole village sort of holds her in this like they don't interfere, they don't mess with her because they think that she killed her husband who disappeared. And she doesn't correct them on that because she likes the way they ignore her, I guess. The impetus for this book is that uh, some of the other women in the village start to ask Gita, our, our protagonist, to help them murder their husbands. And 
yeah this is all about the chaos that ensues this has been billed as a book with a lot of humor and i did uh, like it is tongue-in-cheek i did enjoy that element i wouldn't say it was the kind of humor where i was laughing out loud or anything it was a quiet humor that i kind of enjoyed and at the same time i felt this had a lot to say about being a woman particularly in india particularly within the caste system and i found all of that side of it incredibly interesting. I also really liked the dog in this, Bandit. I thought Bandit was excellent. Overall I really did like the story of this, although it didn't always do what I thought it was going to do from what other people have said. So yeah, this is undoubtedly one of my favourites on the list. I think this is a really well-written debut. I really enjoyed the combination of things that this book is doing. Part sort of murder mystery, but backwards, like how will they do it? it partly a book about uh, women getting together and female friendship, and partly a book about husbands and like the damage that can be caused in relationships and marriages. Also everything that it had to say about where this is set and the caste system and being a woman or a wife within that caste system. I thought it was both really interesting and very entertaining. And finally we have the book that I am two thirds of the way through and that's The Dog of the North by Elizabeth Mackenzie. I thought that this would be the book that I would like least on the long list, if I'm honest, F literally from snap judgments from seeing it and reading the blurb. And this is a very, very strange one for me. So I've got absolutely no idea what is going to happen in the final third of this book as we speak. I have a couple of thoughts of things that would be quite predictable that I think may be going to happen and probably are going to happen but I, this book is just bizarre I don't know what's going on with this I don't hate it as I'm reading it I I can't put it down but do I know what's going on not really I think this book is basically about a main character called Penny who is a total mess her life seems to be in a complete state and she's in a bit of a state and beyond that I feel like it's just so strange like I don't know what this book is trying to achieve there's so many like weird people and weird happenings it feels a bit <sighs> random random it feels very very random I'll let you know when I finish this book what I thought in the end but it is very compulsive reading and um, one thing I really really don't like and I absolutely hate it when they do this in books is when people get injured in some way early on in the book and then they know that like their leg is infected I've read more than one book where this happens they know that their leg is infected but they ignore all their symptoms of infection and I'm like, oh well, I hope it gets better, sort of thing. And you're like, just go to the hospital. Like this character is in and out of the hospital to visit people, to show somebody your infected leg. Really, really wound me up. That is just one of many, many plot things in this book. I don't actually know what to make of anything within this book so far. I'm hoping there will be some sort of tying everything together at the end of this. I don't know if that is going to happen or not. And it isn't going to be a book that I absolutely love. But it also isn't a book that I hate. It's just a book that I think is a bit weird. I don't know. Those are the books that I have read and am reviewing. So the book that I have started on audio is Wandering Souls. I'm only I think on the third chapter of that but I do only have like I think four or five four more hours to listen to. It's a very short book. So the books that I haven't got to yet on the list and probably won't get to now before the shortlist is announced are Trespasses by Louise Kennedy. I do have this one in hand so if I get the other two finished I might start this before the shortlist. I haven't got to Homesick by Jennifer Croft yet but that is available in one of my local libraries so I may go and get that before the shortlist comes out. And the other two I haven't got to yet are Memphis and Black Butterflies and both of these are because 
uh, the library hasn't got them in for me yet. So Memphis, I've been first in the queue since the day one, but the queue doesn't seem to be moving at all. I think there are only two copies of this book in the county library system. I think probably more were being ordered in paperback, but I foolishly placed my reserve on the hardbacks. We will see when that one comes in. And Black Butterflies, wasn't initially in my library system at all and then obviously got ordered in after being announced on the long list and this book is still on order with my library. I don't know when Black Butterflies is going to be available from my library which is a shame because I would really like to read both of those two books. Do you think at this point that out of principle I am planning to finish the long list no matter what makes the shortlist. Anyway, let's get on with my ranking. For me, this long list, I feel like there's not been that many standout books. I absolutely adore Demon Copperhead. I thought it was the best book I've read this year. I think Barbara Kingsolver's a genius and I absolutely love that one. Everything else within the list, like there, you'll see in a minute, there are ones that I prefer to others, but I would describe most of these books as kind of mid-table books for me. There is like a steady bottom to the list that I, I don't think will change or move, and there's a steady top to the list that I don't think will change or move. From my least favourite to my most, 11th and 10th, we have Glory and Pod. Both of the books that are told by animals in, in the list so maybe that is just something I really don't get on with. I mentioned these both together because I would have said that Glory was my least favourite book on this list but I do feel quite bad comparing it to Pod and saying it's the worst because I'm not actually saying it's the worst, I'm just saying it's my least favourite. I actually think that Glory is a lot more popular than Pod. I think there's a lot about Glory that I think makes it a better written book than Pod, but I think if I was going purely on enjoyment, I probably enjoyed Pod a tiny, tiny bit more and it does pain me to say that a bit but I, I just in, in pod I absolutely loved the character of Google and I can't forget that I loved Google I didn't really love the characters in Glory if I'm honest so uh, Glory at number 11 pod at number 10 at the moment everything else like up to my top books is sort of <laughs> mid-table-ish in, in at number nine I would put Cursed Bread um, as I've said, I, I like the writing, but I don't think it's got the most interesting story to tell. In at number eight would probably be The Dog of the North. It may go down if the ending is as random as the rest of the book, but it's fine. I don't have much else to say about it. Um, it's very readable, if nothing else. In at number seven, I'm going to put Children of Paradise, so missing out on the shortlist. My top six. Number six, five and four I would say for me are pretty level. I, I enjoyed these three probably about the same amount but one of them I think will do a lot better than the others. So six, five and four I would say roughly and I probably would put these in a different order on a different day. I'm a Fan by Sheena Patel, Fire Rush by Jacqueline Crooks, and Stone Blind by Natalie Haynes. Possibly not in that order. The more I think about I'm a Fan, the more I think it's the best book of these three. And I do think that I'm a Fan is the book that will go far out of these three. But in terms of enjoyment, I enjoyed I'm a Fan. There were parts I didn't like and parts I did like. I enjoyed Fire Rush, again, parts I loved and parts that I didn't like so much. And Stone Blind, again, a mixed bag. Parts that I loved and parts that I thought were only okay. Then my top three. And my top three, I'm very, very clear on the order of. That would be number three, The Bandit Queens by Perini Shroff. I think this is a really good book. Very much enjoyed it. A bit higher than a four star, which I would say um, I'm a fan, Fire Rush and Stone Blind, all four stars. This one for me, a little bit better than a four star, but nowhere near a five star. Uh, the Bandit Queens, it was a really enjoyable read for the most part. So yeah, that's in at my number three. In at number two, The Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell. 
I just think that Maggie A. Farrell's writing style is <laughs> a cut above most of the rest on this list. She writes so brilliantly and while this wasn't a five star book for me and I didn't enjoy everything about the plot, I had a, had a good time reading this and I always feel in safe hands with Maggie O'Farrell's writing. I think it's very, very good. And of course, top for me, Demon Cophead by Barbara Kingsolver. By far and away the best book that I've read this year. Five stars and then some. I just absolutely loved the main character, Demon Cophead, and I thought that this was a wonderful feat of writing. Taking Dickens' David Copperfield and relocating it and giving it like this backdrop of the opioid crisis in America. I just thought it was wonderfully done. I loved all the sort of throwbacks to Dickens and I just I just thought this was an amazing book. By far the standout of the list for me, nothing else comes close. That's my ranking. My predictions. I will be incredibly surprised to not see Demon Cobhead on the shortlist. I absolutely think it will be there. The same with the Marriage Portrait really. I think that both these previous winners of this prize definitely deserve a place on the shortlist and probably we will see them on the shortlist. I definitely think, my third prediction, I definitely think I'm a fan will feature. I just think that this book is probably the most currently relevant book in this list. It's certainly of the ones that I've read. It has the most up to the minute social commentary for me and what it has to say about social media I think is really really interesting and I don't think anything else on the list is quite doing what this book is doing. So I think that if we don't get the winner that everybody is expecting, which I think is Demon Cobhead, I do think that I'm a fan could be the, the sort of dark horse winner of this prize, potentially. Now, sadly, I think that my bottom rated book, Glory, will feature in this shortlist. That's the fourth book that I think will feature. I just think that regardless of how I feel about this book, it's cleverly done and there are parts in this book that even I thought were really, really powerful. I just wish there hadn't been so much repetition in the book. I really think it could have been cut down and been an even better book. I do think it will feature on the shortlist, but it obviously wouldn't feature on my dream shortlist. So for the last two places on this shortlist, I do think Bandit Queens is up there in the top six for most people who have read more than one book on the long list. So I'm gonna put that in my fifth place. And in the final place, I'm really, really really unsure. I think it's probably going to be another of the debuts because we do have nine debut novels on this list so it would be very bizarre if as well as those three established authors who have been shortlisted for prizes before it would be very very bizarre to me if we didn't have three debut authors. I think the strongest two contenders probably for this final slot would be Fire Rush, which I say because I have read it, I think it's doing interesting things with language, rhythm, and I think it's doing something that the rest of the list is not doing. But I also think that Wandering Souls, which I've only just started, has received so much praise, and on this one I am absolutely judging from other people's reviews and not mine. I think Wandering Souls is probably telling the story most relevant to, like, the current news in the world. So I'm probably on balance going to predict Wandering Souls, but of the books I haven't read, I do think we could see Memphis or Trespasses sneak into that shortlist. And I do think that Stoneblind could sneak in. I actually think it's probably gonna to go to a debut over another established author. I'm not sure. I find it really tricky to predict, but let's go with Demon Copperhead, The Marriage Portrait, I'm a Fan, Glory, The Bandit Queens, and Wandering Souls. Now I would be delighted if instead of Glory we saw maybe Fire Rush or uh, one of the other debuts perhaps that I haven't read. These are my predictions, so let me know in the comments what are your predictions for what we will see 
on the shortlist on Wednesday or what are your top six books that you've read from this list or even just your top one. I hope you've enjoyed this video today and if you have please do give it a like, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. I do have some other women's prize content which I've put into a playlist and you can uh, click on that over here and you can also uh, find that in the description down below. That's all from me today and I will hope very much to see you all again soon for another video all about books here on Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. Bye for now!